behind what we know so far and who was arrested just moments ago. Fraudsters now contacting you with a phone number that says USAA on caller ID, but is not. The info they're asking you for and how not to fall victim to this scam. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Police in Balcones Heights say two men who ran from the scene of a crash left something very important behind. Actually, it was someone. They left behind a five-year-old girl. That crash happening in the middle of morning rush hour on Interstate 10 near Crossroads. Katrina Weber reports police later caught up with one man and they hope to get some answers. When this pickup rolled over on Interstate 10 near Crossroads, it seems it set in motion a series of unusual events. Balcones Heights police got the call at first only about the crash around 7 this morning. When they arrived, they learned there was a lot more to it. Witnesses told them they saw two men pulling a five-year-old girl from the wreckage. Police say they then handed the child to a stranger and ran away. They say the girl told officers the men were her father and uncle, taking her to school at the time. With help from San Antonio police, they set out on a search, then found one of the men a short distance away near I-10 and West Avenue. They took him into custody, but he made it clear that he didn't want to go. While they didn't find the second man, they say he did leave his ID in the truck. The little girl was checked out at a hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say there's a lot about this case that has them scratching their heads. They don't know what caused this crash or why those suspects would run off and leave the child behind. Reporting from Balcones Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now, according to the Balcones Heights police chief, they were able to arrest the child's father. As of now, it is unclear what he will be charged with. Seguin police are planning to increase patrol at parks in the area after a shooting that left one person dead and another one hospitalized. Police received reports of hearing gunshots around 2.30 p.m. yesterday on North Vaughn Avenue near Highway 90. Once on scene, they found a woman and a man with gunshot wounds. The woman died at the scene. She's now been identified as McKaylin Smith. The man was taken to the hospital. A second shooting was reported just three miles west on Mockingbird Lane. No injuries were reported with that shooting, but a house was damaged. Police are still looking for suspects. An unusual and gruesome discovery of a human leg on I-10 in Cibolo. We now know it's connected to a horrible crash that happened in Bernie. That crash was back on March 22nd, but later on, a person found the human leg on the eastbound lanes of I-10 in Cibolo. Through an investigation, police figured it out. It belonged to the victim of the fatal crash earlier that day. Apparently, the leg had gotten lodged into a passing truck, and then it fell out about 50 miles away in Cibolo. The victim has since been identified as 48-year-old Jeremy McGee of Kerrville. San Antonio police have a person of interest in custody in connection with a shooting on the east side from this morning. The shooting was called in just after 5 a.m. at a home in Porter Avenue, not far from North New Braunfels Avenue. Police say an altercation broke out between two women. A 29-year-old woman was found with a gunshot wound inside the house. Police say a 26-year-old woman was also found inside, and she was taken into custody for questioning. A fatal car crash, a fatal stabbing, and a police shooting all happening this morning in Houston. Police there say someone stole a construction pickup truck, then ran over the construction worker who later died. The suspect then crashed the pickup into a nearby apartment building. When approached by the apartment concierge, the suspect charged with a knife and then got inside the building. Then the apartment manager confronted the suspect and was stabbed in the back. Police say the they ordered that suspect to put the knife down. He allegedly charged toward them as well. The officers eventually shot him and he was taken to the hospital for his injuries. A North Texas man and his stepdaughter are lucky to be alive this morning after their RV flipped multiple times during a tornado Monday night. This is video from Johnson County. County just 50 miles southwest of Dallas. The National Weather Service confirming the debris is from a tornado in that area. The pair were inside the RV when the storm started to pick up speed. When they tried to get out, they couldn't due to stairs blocking the door. By the time we were trying to get to the house, it had rolled over both me and him. And I'm standing at the front door watching as everything just starts rolling over them. And I'm like, oh my God. 
Yeah, the stepdad was eventually able to get the stairs out of the way and got them both out. He was rushed to the hospital with some broken bones, but he's expected to recover. April is National Donate Life Month, the time to recognize the value of organ donation. Just last year, 691 lives were saved because of donations. And one of those many life-saving donations was for the son of Alex Manchaka. Our Max Massey shares his story in hopes that others will sign up to be an organ donor too. It was about yeah, a little after nine o'clock in the evening that we were rushing to the hospital to get there. This was a moment Alex will never forget. It was the moment he found out his son, David, was in a motorcycle crash. We were also informed that we should prepare for the worst. Um, and we asked, what does that mean? Uh, it's like, you know, he's not going to make it. It was at that time that Alex asked the question, can David's organs be donated? He was an organ donor. It was on his driver's license. So we know this would have been his wishes. Now, I, I can't even imagine uh, what you and your family had to go through you know, losing your son. What did it mean to you that you could still help other people like your brother? I know based on what my wife and I and my son, you know, believe in, we believe in if, if you can help, if, if, if there's a way to help someone to live, to live a healthier life, you know, you know, we should. There is a critical need for more donations. Nationally, more than 100,000 men, women, and even children are waiting for a life-saving organ transplant every nine minutes. One organ donor can save eight lives and impact 75 others through tissue and cornea donation. As for Alex and his family, they miss David so much, but they know that there are so many people out there who are better thanks to David. I know it's a tragedy. I know that you have to lose someone uh, in order to, 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 to do this. But what better way to, to create a legacy? What better way to, you know, just inspire, to help someone else? Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. The party with a purpose continues tonight in old San Antonio kicking off tonight at 530. It is back at the historic venue La Villita. And take a look at some of the fun that was happening there last year. A major change this year, though, the event is going to have cashless wristbands in order to buy food and drinks on the grounds. There's also a change in the layout due to the construction in that area for a map of that layout, along with how to get those wristbands. You can head over to our website, KSAT.com. And speaking of our website, if you missed our coverage of the Texas Cavaliers River Parade last night, have no fear. Even if you did watch it, you can go watch it again. It's right now on KSAT.com. Just look for this article. And NIOS is not the only event happening tonight. For more, just scan this QR code that's on your screen right there. It'll take you to a list of things happening throughout the rest of Fiesta. It's as long as three football fields, but it is stuck in place. Why the owner of the cargo on board this ship might have to pay to get it removed. And a celebration happening in Kansas along with some bracket winners and Tiger Woods has a decision, sort of. A scam warning from USAA. How do you know who to trust when the scammers pretend to be the bank? We break down the signs you're about to be duped. This day in Fiesta history is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. So is it Niosa or Neosa? It doesn't matter. We don't care. Just come and have fun. Whatever you call it, A Night in Old San Antonio is an important part of Fiesta history. Created by the San Antonio Conservation Society, it's become the largest historic preservation festival in the nation. Well, we started in uh, way back in 1936 when we were a fall Indian harvest festival at San Jose Mission. Styled after early Fiesta celebrations, this fall festival eventually moved to La Villita, but it didn't become a fiesta event until the city asked in 1946. Then, after many years and many names, it happened. In 1948, we became officially known as the Night in Old San Antonio. About 85,000 visitors attend, and they eat a lot. I mean, we're talking 17,000 pounds of beef and 11,000 pounds of chicken. On average, we've contributed about $1.6 million annually, and that goes towards the, the Society's mission of historic preservation. Preserving our history with a few beers and chicken on a stick? Now that's what I call a party. Adam Kasky, KSAT 12 News.
A call from the bank may not be who you think it is. That's the message from USAA. Sarah Costa spoke with a senior vice president of fraud there who has a warning about the scammers who are targeting locals and some tips on how to protect yourself. These criminals are ruthless, they're despicable, and they're coming at consumers at a rate that we haven't seen before. According to the Federal Trade Commission, consumers reported losing more than $5.8 billion to fraud in 2021. That's an increase of more than 70% over the last year. Senior Vice President of Fraud with San Antonio-based insurance and banking giant USAA says there has been a massive increase in scammers casting out a wide net to gain access to consumers' online banking information. And when scammers email, text, or call you, she says don't be fooled by the bank name that may appear on your caller ID. The number on your phone caller ID, look, it's coming from your bank, so you trust it. Nash says the fraudsters are sending out texts or emails asking if you may have made any large out-of-state charges. When you reply no, the scammers then say your account has been compromised. She says that's when they'll call you asking for passwords to make updates. If you give the scammers your online banking login information, they then can get access to your accounts. So how can you actually tell the difference between scammers and your bank? They're not going to ask you for security questions and passwords and pins. Nash says your bank already has all of your login or security information. She says when in doubt, call the number on USAA's website yourself and always report anything suspicious. They're saying, wait a second, I got this message and it doesn't feel right. Is this real? Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam. Wow, yesterday was absolutely a gorgeous day for the big parade on the river last night. It was beautiful. And then now today, it's like, well, I guess we're paying for it. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot and humid out there right now today, David. And you know what? We ha don't have much rain to speak of. And the aquifer is down nine tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. In the pollen count today, we've got five allergens in the air. But look at oak. Oak is the highest it's been so far this season at 2,980. We're in the middle of oak season. You can see the pollen everywhere. Not only would it be good to have some rain to help out drought conditions, but it'd be nice to wash out some of that oak in the air. Molds, mulberry, hackberry and grass are low. We do not have a good chance for rain in the forecast over the next few days, but there is a 10% chance for a stray storm, especially south of San Antonio. Uh, but if you're planning on going out to Diosa for the first night tonight, it's going to be hot to start the day, 91 degrees around 6 p.m. and then into the evening, mild with temperatures in the 80s, winds from the west at 10 to 15. We'll talk more about which areas could see a storm later on this afternoon, but for the most part, I'll be showing you how hot it'll be in San Antonio coming up in just a bit. We may break a heat record Ooh. today, wow. but I will say this, that compared to last year's fiesta, which was in, what, mid-June, yes. yeah. we should not complain. Oh, well, and, and you're right, Ursula, that the record high for the day is 93 today, and that's what we're forecasting for this afternoon. So it'll be close to record-breaking heat. First, I want to show you the radar out there right now. There are a couple of uh, light rain showers south of San Antonio across parts of the Winter Garden region, the area that needs the rain the most. You can make them out there, although it really is not dropping all that much as far as rain is concerned. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here across areas uh, south of Highway 90, right along 35 there, just to the south of Dilly. You can see that there is that quick splash and dash shower there, and even there was some lightning earlier in that area. And then in southern Atascosa County, south of Pleasanton. You can see right along uh, just to the west of 37 there, just to the west of Campbellton, a quick splash and dash shower as well. Now these areas that are currently seeing the rain have a chance for some thunderstorms later this afternoon, but it will be isolated. But anything for Crystal City, Carriza Springs, Catula, Pearsall, and Southern Atascosa County would be helpful because drought is, is exceptional in those areas. Outside right now in San 
San Antonio. We did have some clouds earlier this morning, but as you can see, it is sunny uh, and it's 81 degrees. Those winds are picking up from the south southwest to gusting up to about 21 miles per hour. Dew points are very high. Summertime dew points. You feel every degree of that 81 degrees uh, and it's 83 in Uvalde, 84 in Catula, 83 in Pleasanton. Hotter in the hill country. It's 88 in Kerrville because they've had complete sunshine today. As I show you the satellite, you can see that we had some clouds early this morning. Those have dissipated. That's why we're a little cooler in San Antonio, but it's still warm. 86 in Stinson, 81 in Converse, 83 in New Braunfels, and as I mentioned, 89 in Bandera. Now there is the potential for one or two storms south of Highway 90 this afternoon and into the evening from about 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. They could produce some damaging winds and even some hail, but notice that even south of Highway 90, there's that um, isolated risk for some severe weather. Odds are it's not going to happen. All right, there's only a 10% chance for that storm to make it into South Central uh, San Antonio area. So as you can see on the future cast, it really does show just one or two isolated severe storms moving uh, to the east. And, and again, those areas could really use some rain. Otherwise, it's going to be hot here in San Antonio and sunny. 93 in San Antonio for the high, 94 in New Braunfels, 97 in Castroville, hotter in Kerrville, 95 degrees, 95 in Floresville, and 95 and then Nixon. Let's take you through that KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, a 10% chance, that's it, but still 93 for the high temperature this afternoon in San Antonio. And into the evening, if you're planning on going out and enjoying Niosa, it'll be a bit breezy. Southwest winds at about 10 miles per hour, and temperatures after sunset will fall into the uh, 70s and 80s. Okay, across the nation, there is a big system to our north that's producing some snow. This is our next cold front that's going to move through tomorrow. Temperatures behind this front are quite a bit colder. Now we're not going to get that cold, but a big difference in temperatures and it's going to be windy tomorrow. We'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour in the morning hours and drier air is going to move through. So that brings us some fire danger tomorrow. But notice how much cold, cooler temperatures will be. We'll be only looking at a high temperature near 80 tomorrow and chilly mornings too. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, our mornings will be in the 40s. If you're setting up early for Battle of Flowers Parade, you'll need the jacket. During the parade, though, things will be nice and temperatures will rebound into the 60s. Wow, a jacket. To That's start, different. <laughs> yeah, to start the Battle of Flowers Parade. Thank you. We finally have the answer to the highly anticipated question. Is Tiger Woods going to play in the Masters this year? We'll have that answer for you coming up. And we've got a party going on in Kansas. All over the state, they're celebrating a big win. Coming up. As of right now, I feel like I am going to play. As of right now. Tiger Woods making that announcement just a couple of hours ago. He wants to test that leg with another nine holes tomorrow, then make the final decision. Yesterday, Tiger played nine of the, in front of a huge gallery there at the Masters. Even before yesterday, Tiger returned to Augusta and played a practice round. So indications started about a week or so ago that he was leaning towards teeing it up on Thursday. It has been 14 months since that horrific car accident that nearly took his leg. It has been a long road to recovery, but here he is at Augusta. Tiger says his ball striking is not really the problem that he sees going forward. It's just the walking and recovering after a round of golf. Walking is the hard part. You know, this is normally not a easy walk to begin with. Um, uh, now, given the, the conditions that you know my leg is in, it gets a little bit more more difficult. And you know that uh, you know 72 holes is uh, is a long road, and uh, it's going to be a, a tough challenge and a challenge that I'm, I'm up for. And as you would expect from Tiger, he says he does think he can win this week. All right, you're looking at the fans in Kansas celebrating after the Kansas Jayhawks won the national championship last night over North Carolina. Kansas was down 16 in the first half, down 15 at halftime. They turned it around in the second half and put together the biggest comeback in the history of the finals. It is the fourth championship for Kansas. Here is your final. They come back and win it by 372-69 over North Carolina. And San Antonio Spurs are in Denver to take on the Nuggets tonight without DeJounte Murray. He's missing tonight's game with a respiratory illness. Said on Twitter, he's lost like seven to eight pounds. 
The Spurs are on their final four stretch. After tonight, it's off to Minnesota, then Dallas. They'll wrap up the season Saturday night against the Golden State Warriors at home in the AT&T Center. The Spurs are fighting to secure that tenth spot in the West, and if things fall their way, they could actually end up in the ninth spot. But first things first, the Spurs' magic number is two. Any combination of Spurs wins or Lakers losses guarantees the Spurs, at the very least, are going to get that tenth and final play in position. The Spurs beat the Blazers in back-to-back -back home games spread out over three days, including Sunday night's 113-92 win. The Spurs had a rough first half, outscored 33-22 in the second quarter and were down 56-48 at the half, but then rebounded in the second half, led by Keldon Johnson's game high 28. That includes his six three-pointers. We took care of business and did what we had to do to win. Um, we definitely can't wait to get, get our... Get, get DeJounte back. Uh, you know, he's a big focal point of our team. He's an all-star, uh, one I go to guys. So, uh, you know, we definitely, it, we definitely missed him. Um, but, you know, like any team, we, you know, we had to, we had to adjust and, and make up for it and, and get the wins. And um, so we can't wait, for, wait to get him back. You know, uh, he's definitely a big part to, to our success. All right, so it's the Spurs and the Nuggets tonight, 8 o'clock in Denver. All right, we'll be right back. We want to get you up to date on that huge container ship that took a wrong turn. It's been stuck in shallow waters near Maryland for three weeks now. Efforts to free the ship and its cargo of 5,000 shipping containers have all failed. ABC's Kenneth Moten has why the next option could cost thousands. This morning, that massive cargo ship called the Everforward going anywhere but trapped in the Chesapeake Bay for 24 days. The nearly 1,100 foot ship carrying 5,000 containers ran aground leaving Baltimore, where it remains stuck just outside one of the busiest ports in the world. How big of a deal is this? It's a it's a big deal. Um, this is a big ship. This is one of the largest container ships in the world, and it's 1,100 feet long. It's the length of three football fields end to end. Captain John Martino of the Annapolis School of Seamanship showing us how the 130,000 ton ship missed its turn down the channel, landing in water 24 feet deep. It needs 42 feet of water to stay afloat. She was moving when she went aground, and she, she dug a trench. The vessel's company, Evergreen Marine Corporation, just happens to own the mega ship that also ran aground in the Suez Canal a year ago, blocking $10 billion in goods daily for nearly a week. The Everford not blocking this critical channel in Maryland, but the U.S. Coast Guard concerned about safety and monitoring for fuel leaks. The ship's company is now invoking an old maritime law that requires those with cargo aboard to help pay the cost to free it. What that means is basically a lot more paperwork and everything has to be settled with the insurers until they actually release the cargo. Meanwhile, on shore, the stuck vessel, somewhat of a tourist attraction. It's definitely a lot bigger than we thought and than we anticipated. And we've learned of a new strategy. The U.S. Coast Guard says crews will start taking these containers off one by one to help refloat this heavy ship. The containers will be placed onto barges and carried back to Baltimore, a tedious process that's expected to take at least two weeks. The cause of this incident is still under investigation. Kenneth Moten, ABC News on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Jury selection for the confessed Parkland school shooter entering its second day for penalty the penalty phase of that trial. Nicholas Cruz pleading guilty to opening fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School four years ago. That shooting killed 17 people and injured 17 more. The jurors would have to unanimously agree on some aggravating factors to even begin discussion of the death penalty. And if that happens, a death sentence must also be a unanimous decision. If capital punishment is recommended, the final decision will rest with the judge. It could take six months to find out his sentence. So what does the future of COVID booster shots look like? That's exactly what FDA advisors are trying to determine this week. The FDA expanded the emergency use authorization of two vaccines so people 50 years and older can get a second booster shot as early as four months after their first one. But that brought up a question. Should those under 50 get a second booster? And whether the COVID-19 vaccine will become an annual shot? All of those questions will be on the table at Wednesday's meeting with the goal of developing what's being called a general framework to inform decisions on COVID-19 boosters. New body cam footage showing the dangerous spot some officers were in when a chase ended 
with the suspect ramming their police units. This was happening in Waterbury, Connecticut. Officers got a tip to the location of a car burglary suspect who is accused in 41 cases. When one of the officers tried to confront the suspect, they took off and began driving into a police unit that blocked off the street. The chase continued for several more blocks. In total, eight police units were hit with damaging uh, collisions estimated at $135,000. Seven out of the eight officers uh, ended up uh, in the hospital, um, ranging from uh, neck strains, lower back strains, uh, multiple contusions, knee contusions, wrist and hand contusions, uh, all, all sustained from the accident from airbags going off. Needless to say, the suspect involved now charged with seven counts of assault on a police officer, along with several other theft related charges. Horrifying scenes of death and destruction left behind in war-torn cities outside the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv after Russian troops withdrew into other parts of the country. The Kremlin calling those images a hoax, but not Ukraine. ABC's Alex Perche with Zelensky's appeal this morning before the UN Security Council. I am addressing you on behalf of the people who honor the memory of the deceased. This morning, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addressing the UN Security Council. The massacre in our city of Bucha is only one, unfortunately, only one of many examples of what the occupiers have been doing on our land. Russia also attending the meeting. It comes a day after Zelensky says he witnessed some of the atrocities of this war firsthand in the town of Bucha, just northwest of Kyiv. The bodies of civilians now being discovered reportedly executed in the streets. This victim with a grocery bag just feet from where they fell. Authorities saying more than 300 victims have been recovered so far. Some bodies were found in mass graves. ABC's James Longman is there. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five bodies in this tiny room in this basement where Ukrainians say people have been tortured. Russia has called these images fake and says claims of war crimes could hamper peace talks. The reports are more than credible. The evidence is there for the uh, the world to see. President Biden is vowing to impose more sanctions against Russia, suggesting Vladimir Putin should be tried for war crimes. He is a war criminal. This guy is brutal. And what's happening in Bucha is outrageous. And everyone's seen it. Ukrainian forces have taken back northern parts of the country, but the U.S. Department of Defense warns Russia could send dozens of 800 to 1,000 battalion tactical groups into the eastern Donbass once those units recover from the fighting in the north. And there are still so many civilians caught in the middle of this fighting. Ukraine's prime minister this morning says that seven humanitarian corridors will open from the city of Zaporozhye to Mariupol. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Let's look at that beautiful sky today. Wow, it's nice. Blue skies, but it's humid out look there, at that. I was going to say, look at the temperature. It's already 84. I know. It's nice to be in the air conditioning right now. And today we're going to be pushing uh, a record, which is 93 for the day. And, you know, it's really shaping up to be a very bad spring for us as far as rain goes. Take a look at how long it's been since we have seen a quarter of an inch of rain or more at the airport. 61 days, about two months since we've seen a good rainfall in San Antonio. So very unfortunate news there. We've only seen four and a half inches of rain since October 28th, and we're seeing the drought slowly expand into Bear County uh, with exceptional drought across uh, the Winter Garden region. And even right now, what you're seeing is just a few isolated showers uh, that are very wimpy and not producing any kind of significant rainfall at all. But it is areas south of San Antonio that could could see an isolated storm later this afternoon uh, as it moves across that 35 corridor. These areas desperately need the rain. I mean, we all need the rain, but with this storm this afternoon, they could be strong or severe. Otherwise, just prepare for the heat in San Antonio. We're going to be looking at a high temperature right around 93, which is the record for the day. So we want rain, but we get heat. But it's fiesta, so people can enjoy time outside if they want to. Speaking of that, I've got a look at your NIOSA forecast coming up in a bit. David Ursula. Definitely a balancing act. Thank you so much, Sarah. Doctors say it's important to care for the mental health of children, but getting them services is not easy. ABC's M. Wynn with new research showing how difficult it truly is.
Every day, doctors across the country see children to check on their physical and mental health. But as more and more young patients require mental health services, doctors say it's getting harder to provide those services. Researchers from Boston Children's Hospital surveyed group practices across the U.S., asking them to rate how easy it is to provide mental health services to pediatric patients. Over 85 percent reported having at least slight difficulty with finding these services. From medication advice to therapy referrals, each step of behavioral health proved a challenge for the majority of these doctors. In big hospitals and small private practices alike, doctors consistently answered the same way. Maybe not surprisingly, rural practices reported more trouble than urban ones. Doctors say despite the findings, parents should still discuss any changes in mood, sleep or appetite in their children with their children's doctor. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. Believe it or not, swiping on social media apps like TikTok can be like an addiction. We'll tell you more about the research that explains why. Learning about cannabis could be as easy as looking upward. The goal behind the new campaign, all about cannabis. These are your top headlines for Cheddar News. Congress finally reached a deal on Monday that on COVID funding that for an additional $10 billion that went unspent from the American Rescue Plan, then those funds will go towards therapeutics and other urgent COVID-related needs. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk claiming the number one spot on Forbes' annual billionaires list, the unseated Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, who's trailing right behind him, that along with Microsoft founder Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Larry Page. And the University of Kansas Jayhawks, this year's NCAA men's basketball champs, defeating the University of North Carolina Tar Heels 72 to 69. Kansas was down 15 points in the second half, making their second half comeback one of the biggest of all time. Now this is the first national championship for Kansas since 2008. And that's your Cheddar News update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The state of New York is launching a new initiative to educate more residents about marijuana. According to the Office of Cannabis Management, the campaign is meant to destigmatize the substance. It'll also focus on public health by explaining the benefits and risks of cannabis use. The government will be airing advertisements on television, radio, public transit, billboards, and social media. New York legalized marijuana back in 2021 for adults 21 and older. Spicy chicken nuggets coming back at McDonald's for a limited time. McDonald's is offering the item at about 6,900 U.S. locations. That's about half of its locations in the United States. Spicy McNuggets first came out in September 2020. They're breaded with a tempura coating. It's made up of cayenne and chili peppers. The return comes on the heels of the limited return of McDonald's Szechuan sauce last week. The availability of the sauce varies by location as well and in only while supplies last. To go with Szechuan. That's you, you never would have read it like no. that. No. <laughs> <Szechuan>. it's <laughs> Kanye West is not going to be performing at Coachella. A source to the rapper said West did not want to take the stage amid his divorce from Kim Kardashian. West had been set to be one of the headliners at the upcoming music festival, along with Billie Eilish and Harry Styles. West also been in a feud with Daily Show host Trevor Noah. Wes was suspended from Instagram for 24 hours for posting a racial slur aimed at Noah. That after the late night host voiced his concern about West and Kardashian. It's now even a story in the Wall Street Journal. The emergence of something called TikTok brain, an addiction of sorts to social video feeds. ABC's Becky Worley has more on this new area of research that is looking into the effect on your child's developing mind. Why don't you say so? TikToks run back to back to back for endless scrolling and kids eat them up. To turn away is very, very difficult because it's like after you've been, say, fasting for three days, then there's a sumptuous meal in front of you. It's hard for anybody to pull back from. 
What's new here? A study done in China where college students were shown short videos while having their brains scanned in a functional MRI machine like this one. In students who were shown targeted videos tailored to their interests, certain sections of the brain involved in addiction were lit up, observably more than when shown a random sequence of videos. In line with these addiction concerns, the study said about 5.9 percent of TikTok users may have significant problematic use. Hold on, you've been scrolling for way too long now. Scientists say kids inherently have less control over knowing when it's time to disconnect because the brain's prefrontal cortex that targets impulse control and decision making isn't fully developed until age 25. For the Sargent family in Phoenix, Arizona, the battle over screen time has been an ongoing struggle with their three young kids since we first profiled them in 2018. Mom Carly says it's only intensified with the advent of TikTok. The mindless scrolling is so... um is so hard on them. And then the their ability to be engaged with people around and but they want to watch their phone and do that at the same time, um, which is so sad. And that was IBC's Becky Worley reporting. TikTok released a statement about all this saying it is increasing the length of videos from three minutes to 10 minutes. That's supposed to help. It reads, quote, in addition to enabling parents to control screen time as part of our family pairing features, TikTok limits evening push notifications and proactively surfaces in feed reminders to take breaks from our app, end quote. Outside with live clam, the temperatures tick it up. Ticking up, cocking up. That's pretty good. <laughs> tick tocking up. I did, a, I did do a TikTok on how the green screen works. You oh, did? So, yeah. Thanks. Wow. It's you're pretty part, interesting. Contributing to the cause I'm, there. I guess, or the problem. All <laughs> right, tonight's Niosa forecast. It's going to be hot when Niosa starts off. Temperatures in the 90s, but in the evening, uh, temperatures will fall into the 80s. So still mild, mostly clear. Winds from the west at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Pretty nice for the first night of Niosa, but even nicer in the coming nights because humidity will go away. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up in a bit. Okay, opening night of Niosa today. Got a feeling some beverages will be sold tonight, especially <laughs> you know, if they're cold. You know, you probably will need to hydrate. I think okay. hydrating is a good good advice there, Ursula, okay. because we're going to be close to a record-breaking temperature. Record for the day is 93, and that's what we're forecasting for this afternoon. All right, take a look outside. You can see the humidity in the air on the horizon. That high humidity dew points in this upper 60s near 70 degrees so that 81 feels more like 85 south southwest winds gusting up to 21 miles per hour. So at least there's a breeze, but because it's from the south southwest, that breeze feels more like a hairdryer than it does anything relieving uh, and look elsewhere. It's already 91 in Bandera 90 in comfort. The reason why it's warmer up in the hill country is because they've had nothing but sunshine today, whereas here in San San Antonio, we had a little bit of clouds to start the day, but since then those clouds have dissipated. It's 81 in San Antonio, 81 in Converse, 83 in New Braunfels. It's already 90 in Divine, 82 in Hondo, and 86 in Lost Maples. All right, there is a chance for storms uh, this late this afternoon and into the evening, but it's south of San Antonio across the Winter Garden region, and some of these storms could even be on the strong or severe side with gusty winds and hail possible. I'll take you through the future cast and you can see what I mean. Really only an isolated storm or two is possible, but these are the areas that are under exceptional drought and could really use the rain. Here in San Antonio, there's only a 10% chance that a stray shower or storm could occur mainly south of Highway 90. Otherwise, it's just going to be plain old hot. 94 in New Braunfels, 97 in Hondo, 97 in Castroville, 92 in Holotus, 94 in Converse. Up in the hill country, it'll be in the mid 90s. Records will likely be broken across the KSAT 12 viewing area, and we'll be close to that record here in San Antonio. Let me take you through the KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll be warming up this afternoon into the low 90s. By 4 p.m., we'll be at 93 degrees. Winds will be from the southwest, west 
southwest at about 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Only a 10% chance for a stray storm. Otherwise, it's just going to be hot and sunny. Then this evening for Niosa, temperatures are going to uh, cool down, but not all, by all that much. It'll still be in the 80s for most of Niosa, and even by midnight, temperatures will be only in the 70s, so a very mild evening on deck. But we do have some changes on the way. Here's a look at the satellite and radar. Big system across the southeast. That's uh, moving off into the Atlantic, but up to our north, you can see some snowfall and a cold front. This cold front is going to move through tomorrow, and no, it's not going to bring temperatures in the 30s, but it is going to bring mornings in the 40s later on this week, and it's going to make it very, very windy. Tomorrow, winds are going to gust from the north up to 40 miles per hour during the first part of the day. That's going to sap out all this humidity that we're feeling out there right now, but with dry and windy conditions, fire danger tomorrow is going to be very high. I expect that we'll have red flag warnings. Now, the high temperature tomorrow after that front moves through going to be some 10, 15 degrees cooler. It'll only be 80 for the high. And then take a look at those morning lows Thursday, Friday, Saturday for Battle of Flowers. If you're setting up early or going out there early before the parade starts, you'll need the jacket. But during the parade, it's going to be nice. It'll be in the 60s. High temperature on Friday, 80 degrees. And then for Fiesta Flambeau, looking nice as well. Only a small chance for rain on Sunday and Monday. We'll be back with more news. Oh, big day for SA Live. Let's go to them now. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah, we know how to bring the party, but do we know how to bring the party in a box? Because someone does. Allison Craig <laughs> does. San Antonio in a box. And you've got a special going on, right? We do. It's SA Live for 10% off. All right. And I'm going to show you boxes for Fiesta as well as for Easter. Speaking of Fiesta, the oh, coveted. Yes. Metal. 2022 SA Live Fiesta Metal and Jen is where we are going to be giving it away. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we'll give you a hint. There's some really cool cars here, some really awesome people. We've got music, some food trucks, and of course, a bunch of these to give away. We'll tell you where we're at. That's coming up. Back to you guys. Nothing says Fiesta like met medals oh, and Coscarones. We're going to tell you about the Festival de Cascarones. <laughs> Texas A&M San Antonio, the youngest mariachi. You know him well, but it is official right now, according to Guinness World Records. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. It's already 85 in San Antonio, and we're going to be in the low to mid 90s this afternoon. Very hot this afternoon. 97 in Castroville, 94 in Converse, 95 in Kerrville, 94 in New Braunfels, and 93 in Seguin. Niosa also kicking off tonight. And it's going to be hot to start the evening and temperatures will fall into the 80s after sunset clear and mild to start Niosa. But because of a cold front tomorrow morning, it's going to get more pleasant outside. Now it will be windy tomorrow with gusts of up to 40 miles per hour, especially in the morning. That'll bring fire danger during the day, but that front is going to make things more mild for us. Chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons for the remainder of Fiesta. A chance for storms returns Sunday and Monday. Right now that chance is low but we're hoping those numbers go up because we really need some rain in San Antonio. Sure do. Thank you so much, Sarah. That Fiesta battle was pretty fancy, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you we're going to get you one of those in just a few minutes because SA Live starts right now. Today at SA Live, it's must-eat Easter treats from a local bakery that's making the holiday even sweeter. Ooh, that Plus, good. a big Fiesta event is happening at Texas A&M San Antonio. I'll give you a hint. Cascarones will be flying everywhere. And he's the youngest paid mariachi according to Guinness World Records. Yep, it's official. And we hear the story behind this local musician with that cute little face. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. <laughs> hey, the party is, of course. Still going on here at Historic Market Square. Hello and happy Tuesday. Viva Fiesta. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm Mike Oster Hage. And the party inside, we've got a ton of people outside. Hi, everybody out there. Yay, they're waving. Yay, yes, you're on TV. Yes. And there are a bunch like, of people. We're like fish in a bowl right now. Fish in a bowl. <laughs> yep. And there are a bunch of people downtown last night as well. Yeah. Yes, of course, for the after party for the Texas Cavaliers River Parade, but yep. also the 
the parade itself. And boy, there's about 50 some odd floats down there, one of the biggest parades and lights and music and oh my goodness gracious, it was so much fun and all the wonderful charities that the Texas Cavaliers donate to and now it is right in the heart of Fiesta. <laughs> yes. All right, well, from San Antonio Fiesta events to San Antonio Fiesta in a Box, our first guest today, San Antonio in a Box, is a company supporting all of our favorite local businesses this Fiesta and Easter season. Allison Craig is here to show us how these theme boxes are packed, what goes in them, and how you can get them. Welcome, good to see you again, Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta, good yes. to see you. Yes, all right, let's talk about your Fiesta box, because that's incredibly popular, yeah, right? Yeah, it is year round. So we have uh, the salsa, the churro popcorn, we have all the twin products to make the uh, margarita and the kit, and then we have a new artist. Um, Blaze and so an Alamo chocolate bar and who can go wrong with the pinata so it's such a nice little token of home right that you it can is. either give to family and friends out of state or hostess gifts birthday gifts right anything kind of gift yep you know, and, and most everything is all local. And just looking at some of those things, we're like, oh, yeah, they were just on the show uh, last week. They were on the show a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, all the, it's great to promote these local businesses, it right? It is, right. Yeah, because every, every dollar spent goes back into the small businesses. So it makes just a huge difference instead of running to Target and sending a gift or anywhere else. So, yeah, Ordering something really online great. like that. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of online, though, you can go onto your website and you have different uh, box sizes and we everything do. you can choose from, right? Yeah, we have pre-made boxes or uh, you can choose any five seven or ten items and mix and match and ship we do international shipping as well so you can get San Antonio in a box to anyone anywhere and how many choices you know options do you have as far as items in the box we have about 50 options and then if we don't carry a specific product then we'll go out and find it for you to build and, your box and you can build the box with a set number or yep. you can customize right? right yeah so five seven or ten or a pre-made or we customize So that's them. a great thing. Not only the, like you said, the, the things on your shopping list, but if I wanted something specific from this one store mm -hmm. and you just go get it. Yeah, it we'll go there. get it. We've added in Topo Chico. We've added in some like new products that a friend's friend makes. And so we just try to work with everybody and support local. I love that. And of course, Fiesta, the big celebration there. And then of course, we've got Easter coming up. And if you can believe Easter is in what, two weeks from oh, Sunday. So uh, a <laughs> great way to send a little bit of Easter. What goes in this basket? We have uh, the cascaronis, we have more popcorn, a lot of Easter basket fillers, but one of our newest and most popular items is are the Play-Doh kits by the Narwhal Box. So they're so cute and they're for adults too, but we wanted to try to bring, uh, be able to send. Oh, there's the scissors. <laughs> be able to send grandkids, anyone, something local, supporting a, a small business and make it crafty and fun for and, Easter basket. And you said the nice thing about this Play-Doh though, it's not like the regular stuff that we used to get as kids. It's got essential oils in it. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. I know. I, I, let, me, let me smell this because. I know. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't so, smell like regular Play-Doh. So again, that's this, better. Is, this is like those coloring books. This is for the grown-ups. You yes, just sit there. Exactly. It's almost like one of those, uh, those stress balls. You can just sit there and yes. you know, I know. make all yes. sorts of little shapes with it too. And the popcorn on here, if you can just read the title of that, the name, it is, Popcorn let's Friday. see, Lemon Berry Cheesecake with Bavarian Cream. That's right. Oh, heavens to Betsy. So <laughs> any occasion coming up, Mother's Day, mm -hmm. Father's, Father's Day, Day coming up as well. Yeah. And this is also good for, like you were talking about hostess mm -hmm. gifts, but uh, weddings or yeah. if somebody, uh, a house guest right. comes, this can be on by their bedside. Yeah. Exactly. So if someone, say, say they're able to pick a theme for their box, but they don't know what to put in it, yeah, yeah. what to put in it you guys can we that? help yeah that's my favorite part is okay. when somebody calls and says hey like we are trying to match this specific theme we want Cinco de Mayo we want to go this route some products need to be made here and here and so that we just go with it and try to create their vision so okay. it's really fun and not only uh, online but you've also got another store you're opening up we too, right? do yes we just moved into a storefront in Alamo Heights at 5715 North New Braunfels um, in Suite 100 and so people can pop in and shop or they can pick up their box locally and it's really great Wonderful. Nice. I love this idea. Yes, thank you so much. For more information on San Antonio in a box, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code that you see there on your screen. Great way to spread a little bit of Fiesta cheer. And now we got to spread a little Fiesta cheer. We need you 
to show us what you're doing for Fiesta. Yes, share your Fiesta photos at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll make you famous, possibly, if we see some of those later on in the show. <laughs> you know what we forgot? What? Our metal sashes right now. Oh, yeah. We have to put them on, because speaking of metals, <laughs> guess who's giving away a metal right now? We are. Yeah, Jen Tobias Trusky is somewhere on the north side, handing out all those coveted Fiesta medals. Jen, where are you? Oh. Hey, guys. Yes, I'm with SJRC Texas, and this is the moment you've been waiting for, the big reveal for the location. Are you ready? Well, here we go. All right, we're at 8918 Tesoro Drive, right off Broadway, north of Loop 410. We're going to start giving away our medals at 2 p.m., okay? Two o'clock, that's the magic hour. Right now, we're out here with Lauren Size. She is the Chief Public Relations Officer with SJRC Texas. Hi, Lauren, good to see you. Good to see you too, Jen. It's a beautiful day to be out here, but let's talk about what S. JRC Texas is. Yes, so SJRC Texas is a nonprofit organization. We work with children and families to find these children, these vulnerable children, really a safe and loving home to be a part of. So, you know, we're encouraging people to come Viva Fiesta with us. Yes. And also, if you're open to adopting or fostering, come talk to us about that. Got it. Lots of great information. Now, you provide healing, hope, and a home to children and families. Tell us a little bit more about what you do and your team, too. Yes, yeah. so we have all of our team members, most of our team members here today. We are the lead provider for community-based care through our Belong Division. We have an emergency placement. We work with pregnant and parenting teens, victims and survivors of child sex trafficking, and so much more. And then, of course, our child placing agency. If folks are interested in learning about becoming a foster and adoptive parent, we would love to talk to them and have them open up their hearts and homes to our abused, and abandoned, and neglected children. Got it. Lots of good information there. But how can people get involved if they'd like to make a difference? Yes. You know, sometimes open up your heart and home to children in care can be a you know quite a bit and so there are a number of ways that folks can get involved it can be volunteering becoming a mentor providing babysitting or respite care to these vulnerable youth we would love to have anybody come out and chat with us today got it okay again you can get all the information on how you can help here and we are going to be doing our medals do you have yours you want to show your medals yes, check out our beautiful fiesta medal and all of the proceeds do benefit our abused and abandoned children and families throughout the area and we're going to take a little walk over here because if you do come out here first of all our medals are right here and they're ready i'm going to show you guys say hi <laughs> our case that team is ready to hand out the medals and dc we're going to walk this way and tell me a little bit more this is your team right yes this is quite a few members of our team here we've got um, Kiana over there who helps us with our social media but then we do have our wonderful prevention team over here you know in April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month so our whole goal is to really prevent abuse from happening in the first place and Jackie Gonzalez is over there she's our chief prevention officer so we go in homes and provide free or you know virtual help too yes. to give parents the support that they truly need oh that's amazing all these people doing amazing things again thank you so much we're going to be handing out the SA Live medals here with SJRC Texas, two o'clock today. This is the location to get your free medal, 8918 Tesoro Drive. For more information on SJRC Texas, visit their website, website sjrctexas.org, or give them a call, 210-876-6763. And later, we're gonna check out some really cool cars over there. I wonder if they'll let me drive them. I don't know, we'll see. Back to you guys. <laughs> Hopefully they let you take the wheel. That'll be fun. Good point. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Jen. All right. Get your Easter sweets baked fresh from a local bakery this year. We find out what special the bread box has for this upcoming holiday. Plus, the party is still going. We check out the Festival de Cascarones happening at Texas A&M. That's next.